this session we're going to take a look at working with the shading and highlighting plugin and brushes from advancedartist.com. This is a new plugin for shading, highlighting, and creating feathered edged objects in CorelDRAW. And it also comes along with over 80 custom artistic media brushes for CorelDRAW for shading and highlighting, working with gradients, and also some artistic illustration brushes. We can take a look at the Nemo type fish here, which is actually a clownfish. And we can see this illustration. This was all done in vector using these tools. And you can see the shading and the highlighting, adding depth or dimension to the illustration of the graphic or design. If you look at the biomedia low, it looks kind of flat. We want to add some pop to that through shading and highlighting to set it off. I'll lasso the Biomedia logo and I'm going to zoom out by pulling back on my center mouse wheel. Bring that down here a little bit so we can work on that and then I'll push forward on my center mouse wheel to zoom in. From this point what I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and open the plugin. So once I've installed it, all I need to do is go to Window, Dockers and come all the way down to Advanced Artist. You can't see it but it's here. And that'll bring that docker up. Then I can click on shading and soft edges. And that'll open that up. Yes, I've got the latest version. And here we can see that left click, hold down title bar, and I can move that. Now I have some options here. I have steps or the number of steps that I will use to create my shading or highlighting object. I also can select a point size. I can adjust this with the plus or minus keys or by entering a numerical value. I have the edge options for my shading objects, which I have round, bevel, metered round, and metered bevel. I have a shading and highlighting object option, outside shading, inside shading, and the option to keep the original object. I have apply and undo. Here I have feather edge, which is like a drop shadow, and I can enter the percentage of feather I want on the object select a DPI and apply and undo. So those are my options for the shading and highlighting plugin as I like to call it. To get started what I want to do is add some shading, highlighting, and some pop to the Biomedia logo. To get started I'll go over here to the ellipse tool. I'll left click and change to that. You can see that's set to arc mode. I'm going to change that to ellipse. I'll come here over the green circle and I'll hold down shift and control to create a perfect circle from the center point right about that size right there. I'm going to change my steps to let's say 20. I'm going to change this to 0 0.15 and I'm going to go in with a shading and highlighting object and I'll click apply. Now that's kind of big but I can resize that so I'll bring that down just to about that size Come over here and then I'll come over here and right click on a yellow. Now these have transparency applied to them by default so I will go to my transparency tool I'm going to change that to say 93 and hit enter. Now I can see much more of that yellow. Left click make this a little bigger again. Then I'll right click on this and I'll go to order and I'll select in front of and I'll click on the circle. Reposition that a little bit more. And I might want to give that even less transparency. I'll go to say 90 and hit enter. Now that's nice and bright for the yellow highlighting and reposition that right about there. Maybe even make it just a little bit smaller like that. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this S shape that I have here, or S type shape, and I'll hit Control Z to move that back. I'm going to select Keep Original Image. I'm going to change this to, say, 30 steps, and I'm going to change this to 0 0.010. And then I'm going to click on Apply. Now, I had shading and highlighting selected, and that's not what I wanted, but I can just undo that. And then go to inside shading, which is what I wanted. So you see how that undo works. And then I'll apply that. 
I'll left click and bring this over and you'll see what I've applied here is a shading object. Now that was the original selection so it left it with that. I'm going to click here and get this and this is a group of 30 objects and you can see that this is transparent. So I can take this and I'll hit Control Z and send that back and then I'll just left click on white and you can see the change and I'll go up here to a gray till I get a softer effect. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down Alt and select the S shape that was behind it. I'll hit Control C on my keyboard and I seem to have lost that. I'll hit Alt again, make sure I got that selected. I'll hit Control C on my keyboard and then I'll hit Control V to paste that back in. Come over here to my transparency tool. Start right about in here. I'd say left click, hold down, drag that way. And now I've got some highlighting going on up here. I can make some adjustments to that by selecting the S shape and then holding down Alt and then I'll get back to the group with 30 objects. And let's make that a little bit of a lighter gray and we can see that lightening up as we go down having an effect on that. And I think I'll be happy right there. Next what I want to do is I want to add some highlighting here where these objects meet, where this curved object is. And to do that, what I'll do is I'll zoom in here and I'm just going to left click, hold down, right click one time and duplicate that. I'm going to go to my shaping tool and I'm going to select this node, this node, and this node holding down the shift key. And I can see that the direction is not correct. I'm getting this inside line segment or these two line segments. So I'm just going to hit control A, select all of those nodes. I'm going to come up here and reverse direction. Now if I click here with the shape tool, hold down the shift key, click again, and again I'm going to get those two line segments and that's what I want. I'll hit control C and then I'll hit control V to paste that back in. Now I've got this line segment and I'll right click to make that line segment or those two line segments red and I'll bring them over here and put them in position. I'll zoom in really close because I really want them in the correct position. Those two line segments, which is actually one curve or a curve on layer one. Now that's in place. I'll minimize this and I'm going to go to Window, Dockers, Effects, Artistic Media. I'm going to come here and I'm going to turn off Presets. And I'm going to deselect the Object Sprayer. I'm going to come here to the Browse. Now I'll be in the Artistic Media Strokes. I'm going to come down to my Shading Gradient Brushes. I'll expand that. I'm going to go to my Airbrush Shading. I'll expand that. And I'm going to go with Medium Steps and select OK. Now I can see those brushes. Now I'm going to select this brush here with that curve selected. Click that. And you can see that was applied and change that to a white. And you can see now I have that white highlight going through there. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm happy with how that looks. So I'm just going to right click and select Break Artistic Media Group Apart. Or I could hit Control K. I'll click off with a left click in the workspace. Select that curve and delete it. I'm going to take this highlight. I'm going to bring it down here. Right click one time to duplicate it holding down with my left mouse button. And I've got a duplicate of that. I'll just mirror that horizontally and vertically. Then I'll zoom in down here and put that in place, which would be right there. So now we can see we've got quite a bit of change in the design. A lot of shading and highlighting is starting to get some depth to it and some pop. The next thing I'll do is have some shading here at the bottom of the green circle. To do that, I'm going to go to the Ellipse tool. I'm going to change to Arc Mode. I'm going to start from as close to the center as I can get in the green circle, holding down Shift and Control to create my arch from the center point. Then I'll go to my Shape tool, and I'll hold down Control to constrain the arch while I go up the other side of the green circle. 
and I want to make this a little bit smaller and bring this over more towards the center. I will bring my shading and highlighting plugin back up and now I'm going to go with let's say I'll stay with 30 and try the 10 and see what I get going with the shading and highlighting and here I'll click apply. I didn't want to keep the original image and I think that's a little too much so I'm going to go with undo deselect the original image and I'm going to go with let's say 25 for my steps and then click apply. Now I can bring this up into my green circle. You can see that shading there. I'll left click and pull this out this way a little bit so it's not doesn't have those rounded ed edges in it and bring it in there just like that because I don't want this roundness in here. I'll pull it out that way a little more even and you can see the shading effect there. So what I'll do is from there I'll hold down alt select the circle I'll copy and paste that then I'll create a rectangle around all of this. Go to my pick tool and select the green circle. Make sure I get that selected. Hold down shift, select the rectangle. Come up here, combine. Hold down shift, select that shading object that I just created. Click on back minus front and you can see that shading in there. Now the logo or design is radically different with the shading and the highlighting working with the shading and highlighting and soft edges plugin and our brushes. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll see you in our next session.